This is my review of the Canon 24mm EFS f2.8 lens. summary of this review right up front and if you appreciate that take a moment to hit that thumbs up button that's always appreciated if you're looking for your first prime lens and or a very versatile walk around focal length in an excellent image quality tiny package the 24 millimeter f 2.8 is a prime lens that you should seriously consider but let's take a few moments and dive a little bit deeper into the discussion of whether or not this is the best prime lens for you and your camera. The first thing I want to address is what is a prime lens. This is of course a lens that doesn't zoom. It's a fixed focal length that only offers 24 millimeters. Now a question I often get is why would I buy a lens that I already have that focal length in that field of view? Kit lens 18 to 55 offers 24 millimeters. It is even marked nicely on the lens. I found that the true 24 is just after the 4 or at least matches this exactly. That's true, it's the same field of view. And this is a really good way to figure out whether or not a prime lens, or help you figure out whether or not a prime lens is going to work well for you. If you're considering the 24, or the 40, or the 50, you can figure out what those fields of view will look like. It's going to be the same as far as the field of view goes. But the other differences that we need to talk about, and I've got a whole video about why you should own prime lenses and what those differences are, but I want to hit on a few of them right now in this video in specific regards to this lens. Well, the first is maximum aperture available to you. This is an f2.8 lens. Its maximum aperture is f2.8. The kit lens has a variable maximum aperture. It changes as you zoom. You start off 18, it's 3.5. By the time you get to 24, it's f4. Four. That's one stop of light difference between this lens and that. And depending on the situation, that may or may not be a big deal to you. Where it helps most is in lower light situations and you're trying to capture moving subjects because you can open up your aperture, lets in more light, which means you can increase your shutter speed uh, and keep that exposure high enough that it's proper and capture moving subjects without them blurring. The counter argument is, yeah, but the kit lens has image stabilization, so I can shoot in low light handheld, even at slow shutter speeds. Yes, but if a moving subject is in the frame, it's going to be blurred when you're using that image stabilization. That only helps avoid blur by handshake. So, depends on what you're shooting, whether or not that's important to you. Another difference between f2.8 and f4 is your control over your depth of field. Now, there are three ways to control your depth of field, really. Your aperture. The focal length that you shoot at, longer focal lengths, allow you to get narrower depth of fields, and your distance from the subject. We're just going to address the fact that it's f2.8 to f4. It's not a huge difference as far as depth of field goes, especially shooting at f or at 24 millimeters. It's a pretty slight difference. I've got a couple samples here to show you side by side. You can see a difference, but it certainly isn't one of those ones where it's like, wow, I've been able to completely separate my subject from the background. Now you can get closer, and the closer you get, it has more of an impact. But in normal shooting distances of humans and other subjects that you might be wanting to take a picture of, it's a pretty slight difference. Another reason I touch on in the other video, and is true here, but again, it's a fairly slight difference, is image quality. Primes generally give you better image quality. At 24 millimeters versus the kit lenses, they're both Sharpness wise, pretty decent. Chromatic aberration, controlled a little bit better in the prime. Vignetting, that's your darkening in the corners, is significantly better coming straight out of the camera with the 24. You certainly see that. If you've got lens correction turned on though in the camera, you're not really going to see it anyway. Uh, so there's not a huge quality difference. Don't buy this and think that you're going to be get stunningly sharper images than your kit lens at 24 millimeters. They're a little bit sharper but nothing to get excited about. The last point I want to talk about, and it's the most noticeable one, is the size. This is a very small lens. Now, the 40 when it came out was really exciting because Canon had no pancake options up until that point. And so this feels a little bit less exciting because we already have a lens like that at the 40 millimeter mark. And we're gonna talk about the differences between these in just a, a moment. But when you compare it to the kit lens, 
18 to 55, or especially the 18 to 135. It can go from whether or not you decide to leave your camera at home tonight because you don't have a bag big enough or don't want to carry along this much, to, well, yeah, I can bring that along with me and take some nice pictures for an evening out, really nice focal length, and it's really nice that it's so small and light. To be honest with you, it's not a huge weight difference from the 18 to 55 though, because it is metal mount. The construction of this lens in general is excellent, feels very well put together, very sturdy in the hand. And of course the kit lens is a plastic mount and it's fairly light. It's a little bit heavier, but it's not a big difference. Noticeable difference between it and the 18 to 135, which offers a whole lot of range for that size and that weight. One area we haven't touched on that I want to talk about briefly is uh, video. Now there are two groups of folks out there shooting video. I'm gonna lump everybody into two groups. There are the parents that wanna pick up a camera, press record, and have the camera do all of the auto-focusing and everything, and just capture those fun moments or on the soccer field, things like that. You all are often using autofocus. This is an STM lens. It does nice, smooth autofocus as the kit lenses do and the other STM lenses do. Um, but, for that second group of folks that are the more professional or are professional videographers and are often manually focusing, this lens is not quite the best. And I've had these same complaints about the 40 and I still do after using it for over a year. Uh, the focusing ring is very small and it's that STM style technology. It is that STM technology, which means that at sometimes there's a little bit of a lag between when you move this and the focusing actually happens. It's just the technology, it's focused by wire. so. Uh, you know, so it's not great and I often find myself sticking my fingers in the way because it's just so small to get a finger on here uh, and shoot. It's certainly possible to do manual focus from time to time. I've used it that way, but it is not my favorite lens if you're professionally recording video and you want to do manually focusing often. I've thrown it on this T5i though because I want to tell you one thing and that is it's a really nice focal length on a crop sensor. It comes out to be about 38 millimeters. So that is the same, there's always confusion about this. The 24 millimeters that's marked on your kit lens is actually 38 millimeters. The 24 millimeters that's marked on this lens is actually 38 millimeters. And that works out to be quite nice for selfies. Um, I can hold it out away from me right here and get it all in focus, especially if I touch on my head so that it gets it in focus. Um, and it's quite nice of a selfie cam and focal length, and again, it's that nice small size that makes it really easy and portable. There is, of course, no image stabilization, as I mentioned in it, so if you're trying to do handheld video, it's not going to be the best, and there are better prime options that do offer image stabilization, like the 28 and the 35, but it is an option, and it's there if you're interested in it. So where does this lens fit in my recommendation for cheap or affordable Canon Prime lenses? Well, the first lens I want to mention is the 50 f1.8. The nifty 50, the plastic fantastic. At f1.8 and 50, that is a significant difference between what the kit lens offers you in Aperture. We're talking about the kit lens at 50 is 5.6, right in that range. 1.8 to f5, huge difference. Huge difference in the amount of depth of field control you have. Huge difference in the amount of light that you can let in. Downsides, that thing is built, well, it's built like the kit lens, maybe worse. Uh, and um, it's fairly cheap and slow to focus. But for a hundred bucks, if you really want serious depth of field control and you're on a budget, that is a, certainly a good possibility. The other lens to mention is the 40, which is very similar to the 24. This has a benefit of being an EF lens. It will work on full frame cameras. I love to walk around with this on my 5D Mark III. So if you're thinking that you're gonna be full frame at some point in the future and you're looking for a prime lens, this is great. And of course, this is basically the same focal length as the 24 is on a crop on full frame. On a crop, it's a little bit longer. And because it's a little bit longer, you can also get a little bit more depth of field control at that f2.8. It's nice. Same complaints about video side and the autofocusing, of course, as well. And then I've got a host of other ones. If you want manually focusing or you don't mind manually focusing, Samyung, Bauer, Rokinon offer a whole host of really nice prime lenses, very sharp quality. They're starting to actually get out of the cheap range, even though they're manual focus. Their quality is nice and they're wide open apertures. Uh, they're in the range of $300 to $600. So I'll put a list 
I'll put a blog post right down below this. Take a moment to click it, read down through those to see what you think will work better for you. Back to autofocus and spending a little bit more money. The Canon 35mm f2 IS is a really nice lens. That's a great focal length, crop sensor or full frame. Gives you image stabilization, gives you an f2 aperture, quite nice. There is the 28 also that has IS, but we're getting up into the range of about $500. And then there's Sigma's 30, the newer one, which is an f1.4, also in the range of about $500. And if you want that more versatile focal length, but you want really good control over your depth of field and high quality performance and low light, plus those new Sigmas are very sharp, that is probably my top pick. If you want image stabilization, then go to that Canon 35. So that's my summary of this lens. It's probably greatest feature is the fact that it makes your camera a good bit smaller and you're more likely to take it out with you when you go out. Downsides, not a huge difference from the kit lens as far as quality goes. It is EFS, so crop sensor only. And I said, I wish it was F2. F2.8 is okay, but F2 would make me a little bit more excited because we could get just a little bit more separation from our subjects and the background um, and have a little bit more separation from what the kit lens provides. But all in all, a very nice lens. If you've got any questions about it, if you wonder still if it's the right lens for you, the best place to ask questions is over on my Facebook page. That's the first link right down below the description for this video. There are lots more links down, including if you're thinking about buying this, putting it in somebody's stocking, because it is a very nice stocking stuffer, uh, then the links to buy are right down below. I suggest B&H. They are wonderful, fantastic, and they make many of my reviews possible. So thanks to them, and I'd appreciate it if you use their link. Thanks so much for watching, and if you haven't already, subscribe. And if you haven't already, hit that thumbs up button.